Issue 273. So we start out seeing the roboticized Sonic attack robots Mega City with his laser shooter. I guess there's gonna be a lot of this boring padding, where various good robot masters try to deal with him when I know they're gonna lose. But I really don't care. They're not Sonic characters, and I'm pretty sure all the tension is artificial. These two pages are way too boring for me to talk about them. It's not like they've got plot holes or anything, so there's really nothing to say. Then we see another page wasted on some robot masters that used to work for Wily, being happy to agree to fight Sonic for Dr. Light. The story should have just cut to them fighting Sonic instead. I guess we have to see him doing something other than fighting Mega Man to try to take advantage of this concept before it goes away. But it's such a boring waste of our time because they're not accomplishing anything. So it's probably nothing you need to see to avoid being confused. Hence, it's padding. And I'm spending the whole time wondering why he doesn't just stick to using the spin dash at high speed, which would cut through them instantly. We should be told that they are made of such tough metal that his spin dash would just bounce off them. But that's inherently harder to believe. How does he think standing still and shooting in one direction is ever a better idea? That's not taking advantage of his super speed. I guess it's just going to be there to justify him not beating every enemy instantly. To try to balance Sonic. At that point, why roboticize Sonic then, instead of Tails? Sonic just talks like a generic robot here. At least that's a change of pace from him talking in a cocky, unfunny way. It makes sense that his worst enemy wouldn't respect his original personality, but it just adds to the boredom because he has dialogue you just want to skip. Dialogue that immediately urges you to skip it. Probably because the grammar isn't good enough, so I guess it's slower to read. Sonic says he's overseeing the Unity Engine's activation, and then he gets interrupted by a flying robot fist being sent to him like he's the red robot from Sonic Boom. Then I'm excited again when I see Mega Man trying to fight the various Freedom Fighters. But the scene doesn't focus on that. Instead, Sally tells Oma Chow to tell Cream to make the call, and Cream tells her mother that they need General's help. I'm glad he's going to be used again. This is clearly the same person as Emerald, so is using him with a different design and very slightly different name really enough to get around Sonic's ban on Emerald being in the comics? That's convenient. Is there a ban on him being in the comics? Because it'd be simpler if it turned out there wasn't, then. I immediately found it strange that Cream called her mom Mother instead of simply Mom. And General says while holding an entire tree that he's going to get her firewood for the next three years. Somehow he thought that uprooting a tree was just fine. And the supposedly good person doesn't tell him he made a mistake, and instead says that can wait, and says that he's needed in the capital. If this is subtly implying that he thinks of Vanilla as a mother figure, and that's why he's trying so hard to impress her, that's pretty sweet. Just as I was thinking that Mega Man's gonna be pretty boring to see fight because all he really does is shoot stuff that the heroes will always dodge, he actually hits Knuckles with a bumper connected to his hand. That's a bit more interesting than another beam. He also hits Rotor, and I actually see the impact this time. I like that he's able to use the bumper from Casino Night Zone in a brand new way. It works as a shield from Bunny's lasers as well. She shields herself from fireballs, and Big lands on Mega Man to pin him down. Sally says to regroup, and tells Tails to study the Unity engine set up in her city. Oh, there's two engines, and one in each universe. So that means they're meant for literal unity. And since if the two universes literally became one, they'd be severely damaged from telefragging every solid object ever when objects of another universe appear in them? I guess the Unity engines are meant to change the geography of Mobius so that Mobitropolis is super close to Mega City. Like the continent gets more land. If that's the case though, it'll be physically impossible for the plan to stay shattered while in the crossover. Because Mega Man's world isn't shattered. So if the two fuse, well, I guess it'd be taking advantage of the fact that the continents are farther away from each other because the planet's shattered. Because the hole in between them, from them being further away from each other, would be filled by Mega Man's world continents. Still, if they fuse together and form one big planet, logically that one big planet would have bigger gravity, so that would affect the characters. I guess it's not going to be so much bigger that the increase in gravity would be noticeable, though. Tails says he can't study it without getting past its force field. I guess Sally has a lot of faith in him to assume that won't be a problem. Sadly, we cut away from the interesting part of the story to see more boredom with Sonic. 
Oh good, he does talk like himself here. Why flip-flop? I don't see how Sonic being frozen in time would cause him to fall out of the sky instead of just staying there. I especially don't see White instantly stop being frozen in time and be able to kick him away. I thought he was immune to Time Man. It doesn't make sense that he'd be immune to one but not the other. It's the same power. He can't even keep the rules consistent an issue later. Just like Worlds Collide. He bragged about stopping him. But if no one did anything to Sonic and all the time this guy was talking, they're all idiots then. I'm getting through this as fast as I can. He traps them in rings again and shoots them all. I don't have a reason to care about this because it's a kids' series, so I know they'll all survive no matter what. And these aren't people I'm attached to. He then gets hit with a laser, but I'm sure he'll be fine too. What sucks about this taking place in Mega Man's world is that I don't have the explanation that rings are what's keeping the characters alive anymore. I just have to assume Sonic kept his ring for Mobius and he still has a ton of them. So, Proto Man says the non-combatants are off the field, and now it's just the two of them. Why won't he just use a spin dash? Shouldn't we see him at least hit someone with it and find out they're immune to it? And it could be told that the metal's just that tough? Dad tried to explain why he won't win immediately by spamming the homie attack. Because he'd come to the assumption that every robot he's facing like this is immune to his spin jump. I figured that Big wouldn't be able to keep him pinned, and I'm glad because it would've been lame if that was all that had to happen to end the fight. So Mega Man traps him in a bubble, and he fires a drill and is able to hit Bunny's arm just fine because it's made of metal, so it won't be gory. Sally tells Tails to get Big and tells the rest to surround him with her. It's interesting that the next attack he does is always a surprise. It makes sense that he'd want to use a new attack every time because this would be the first time he'd be using each one, so he'd want to try them all out. And it makes the story feel creative and interesting because you never know what he's going to do next. I thought he'd simply blast lasers at them. So this would be a great story because of this if they cut out all the Sonic parts. He puts up a decoy barrier. I don't know why Knuckles calls them a bunch of floating eggs because they're shaped like circles and not eggs. He hits the thing, and while I'd expect it to shock him, it somehow doesn't and instead Mega Man warps away and the decoy explodes with the shockwave sending people away. It seems like nobody's getting a chance to attack him. Mega Man says to Sigma, uh, apparently he reports to him and not Eggman. Well, that's still hard to get used to. He reports to him that the Unity engine is online. It's funny that when General shows up, he has enough personality to say, hold on, someone else wants to get shot in the face. I'm really glad General has a personality. That's extremely faint praise. But you'd be shocked by how many versions of Emerald don't even get to have that. And I guess it's the little things that really count in this comic. He calls him Buddy and says that all he wants is to live peacefully, but he just had to come to his town. It's a city, not a town. Well, he's new to the world. Some dodging and blocking happens. They're robots, you know, you can have them be damaged. Sonic sends Proto Man away a little by sending a spring out of him. Okay, I think that was the only interesting part of this entire scene. And after Proto Man gets blasted and knocked out, Sonic says Proto Man's not tuned to this thing's shielding and activates the Unity engine. And now Mega Man activates the engine. Sigma says that once the two worlds are fused in two minutes, all of its energy will be his, and a unified world would survive long enough to fuel his evolution instead of crumbling like one world. Oh, so the fusing for the world realistically would end up destroying them, meaning that this has to fail because the stakes are too high for a kids' series. I guess it would destroy them because he's absorbing their energy, and not just because they're fused together. The story ends with Sonic and Mega Man seeing each other and planning to fight. I'm surprised the fight didn't happen in this issue. I knew there would be something in the way of the fight at first because they're in separate worlds and the heroes were sent after them, but to think the story was padded out so much that they didn't get to fight at all. They could have cut out everything that happened in Sonic's part, and they would have had enough time to fight each other. This surprisingly good issue is by Ian Flynn. Well, I found the part of it in Mega City extremely boring, couldn't care less about that. The Mega Man part was interesting because Mega Man had so many different powers, I never knew what he was going to do next. And it made sense that both of them won and activated the Unity engines because they're both so overpowered. I wish the Sonic part was completely cut out of the story because it's totally worthless. Though this is coming from a Sonic fan, so of course I'm totally apathetic to every Mega Man character there except Proto Man. I feel like they all blend together personality-wise, which makes it an especially big problem that each has only one ability. But still, I don't think Sonic did much that was interesting. You'd expect Sonic to just spin dash, because it's always going to be such an overpowered attack compared to anything else you could do. 
Taking advantage of his super speed make him unhittable at the same time he's attacking. He wouldn't have to slow down. He has no reason to think the wall will either be immune to it or not damaged enough. Well, actually, they survived a bomb without being blown up. So we could say that that's why he thinks the spin dash won't be good enough. But then merely spin dashing at them would be boring and add even more padding to the fight. I'd definitely rather see him use rings to trap them than see Sonic spin dash at something again. But the Mega Man part was good. I like that Big tried to pin him down and he had exploding decoys. It makes the fight exciting and rewarding to pay attention to it when you never know what's going to happen next.